Morning everybody, this is Josh over here at Silver Arrow Service and today we are working on a 2005 Volvo XC70. We're going to be going ahead to replace the timing belt and water pump on this car. So we're going to go ahead and walk you through our steps as to how to do it. I had to do some other work to it so I already have a few components off and I can walk through what we took off and we're going to do a step-by-step -step instructions on how to do a timing belt. So Volvo has a five-cylinder turbo engine with a dual overhead cam. So we've already removed the top cover right here. There's T30 Torx bolts that hold this on. So we've removed that. We've removed the other cover here. And actually on the inside of this cover, you'll see two notches. And once I get this front cover off, we'll rotate the engine over so that we can set base timing. So I'm gonna go ahead, remove the 10 millimeter bolt that holds this cover on, and then we'll show you how to set base timing. So all I did now was disconnect the coolant overflow pipe and the level sensor. And then we're just putting this off to the side to give us access to this 10 millimeter bolt here. And we're gonna take off this front cover. So now that we have removed the front cover, <clears throat> you can see our timing belt in here now. These are your variable valve adjusters. And then down here is our water pump, our tensioner, one of our idler pulleys, and then the crankshaft down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this engine over now. We're gonna put it at top dead center, and we're gonna show you where your timing marks are so that you know the engine is completely timed before you remove this belt. So now what we're doing now is we're gonna take off the auxiliary belt. So I have my tool down there. We're gonna just apply the tension so we can slip the belt off up here and then relieve that pressure. And the tool we're using is just a 3 8 ratchet with a T60 Torx bit. Took off the auxiliary belt that runs the water pump and the alternator and everything. There's a tensioner right here that you can see and you actually use a T60 Torx bit right inside here and you apply the tension to relieve, or, I'm sorry, apply pressure to relieve the tension on the belt so that you can slip the belt off. And the reason we're doing that is so we can take off our harmonic balancer. So now that we have the belt off, we're gonna go up. The other thing I did is I did put paint marks on our timing marks. So right now I can tell that we are 180 degrees off. So once we remove the harmonic balancer, we'll be able to rotate this engine right into perfect time so that we can remove our belt. So on your harmonic balancer, you have four 10 millimeter bolts and then one giant 30 millimeter nut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these tens first. We're gonna have to pull these two We'll rotate the engine over 180 degrees and we'll take out the other two. Damn it. So the balancer can go on both ways and you definitely want to make sure you put it back on the same way because you can see how this is thicker than this. One of the telltale signs is the cheater marks in the rear. You can see the face of the actual um, timing chain cog or timing belt cog so you'll know how to go back on. And then there's a, um, an alignment dowel so it only goes on one way. So now that I've rotated it back over, if you look right here on the pulley, you can see 
a little keyway right here on the bottom there. That's your timing mark. And that's telling me that this engine is 180 degrees out like we talked about earlier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this thing over and there's actually a mark on the top of the engine which you can't see that we're gonna line it up with. And I'm gonna put some paint on there so that way we can see it when I come down with the car and show you exactly where we want it. So I'm not sure if you can see it in the video because it is pretty far down there, but if you look at the end of my screwdriver, I'm kind of pointing to the, the casting mark right here on the engine. It's kind of hard to see it. It's on the back side of the belt right here. And it's, it's protruding out of the side of the block but that's essentially where we're gonna line up our timing mark on the bottom of this crank. So I'm gonna rotate it over and set it, and we'll see if I can get a good picture of where it is. Now we have it set up on time. And like I said, I made the paint marks. So if you look down there, you can see the line down. right there. See the, the yellow paint mark that's on the pulley right here. And that is lined up with the casting on the engine. And then if we look up a little higher, you'll see my paint mark on my timing, which there's a little notch in there that you can't really see and then the notch up here, and they're both lined up. So that's telling me that this engine is perfectly in time, and we are now safe to take off the timing belt. After we remove the timing belt, we're gonna remove the two pulleys, and we're also gonna do the water pump while we're in here. I'm taking off the 12 millimeter bolt that holds the tensioner on. I'm gonna remove it all the way because we're just taking the tensioner right off, so there's no reason to leave it in. So now we've removed the belt and the tensioner. I'm gonna take off that other pulley, and then we'll swap out the water pump. I'm gonna go ahead and remove our water pump. <clears throat> There's either six or seven 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna go ahead, crack them all loose, and then I'll use my electric ratchet to take them completely out. I didn't pre-drain the cooling system, so once I crack these free, it's gonna drain the coolant out of the block. Now that we have all the bolts removed, <clears throat> I'm gonna gently pry on the back of the pulley against this 10 mil, and it's gonna pop right off. There we go, there's the water pump. <clears throat> you can see half the gasket came off, so we're gonna have to go in there, scrape off the other half of the gasket, and then we'll clean it all up with some brake clean and reinstall the new one. It's highly recommended that you replace the water pump when doing the timing belt, because the timing of the engine runs on that pulley. And if that water pump seizes or there's any type of a failure, 
this is an interference motor, so the pistons will contact the valves and you will end up essentially blowing the engine. So we have the new water pump in place with the new gasket and you definitely want to make sure that you use new bolts, new hardware. It has some blue Loctite on there, which is going to help seal the passages and everything for the water pump. So we're going to go ahead and put those in, tighten them up, and then we'll be ready to reinstall our pulleys and put our new belt on. All right, so now that we have the new water pump installed, we've put in our tensioner and we've gotten the nut just about tight. But you want to make sure you leave it loose so that once we get the belt on, we can properly tension it. We have our new pulley in, which we have that tightened up. And then the one thing that I forgot to mention is these do move. So the camshaft itself is not moving, but these adjusters do. And all you want to do is make sure that it's backed up so that it can't move forward anymore. And as long as they're like that, we'll be able to hang our belt and everything is properly in time. So whenever you put a timing belt on a car, the way that I like to do it is I like to start by getting it around my crankshaft, around my tensioner and my water pump, and around the pulley on the right side. Now obviously your tensioner is on the left side towards the exhaust cam. So you wanna make sure that you have no slack on the intake side of the belt. So that way once you rotate it around the exhaust and around the intake, when we tension our tensioner, we're gonna take the slack out of the exhaust side because if you have slack on the intake side your engine could be one to two teeth off so I'm gonna go ahead get that all situated and I'll show you before I tension it that there's slack on the exhaust side and not on the intake side Alright, so we've slipped our belt on. You can see that our timing, melt, timing marks are still dead on where we want them, on our crank and our camshafts. And then if you look right here, you want to find the longest run that's not on a pulley. You can see how we have barely any slack here. And then on this side, we have a great deal of slack. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a 6 millimeter Allen wrench inside this adjuster here. And as we rotate this adjuster, this arm right here is going to turn and I like to go just slightly to the right of this U that's cut into the tensioner. And when we go just slightly to the right, as this belt stretches slightly, it's going to fall perfectly right there and you'll know that your tensioner and your timing belt are properly tensioned. Now that we have the belt tensioned, we've checked our timing marks. Our timing marks still haven't moved, so a good practice to get into now is we're going to rotate the engine over two full rotations. The reason we do that is every rotation of the crankshaft, the camshafts do a half a rotation. So by rotating it over two full revolutions, we'll know that our timing marks line right back up and that we have no problems moving forward. So now after completing the revolutions, everything lined up exactly where we want it, everything set to the way we want it. We're gonna clean up the little bit of coolant that's down there still. We're gonna reinstall our covers, refill our coolant, and this car will be all set.
recap of what we did. We replaced the timing belt, water pump, and all the tensioners associated with the timing system on this 2005 Volvo XC70. Uh, we use all OEM components, so it was a Continental belt with an ASIN water pump and then the associated pulleys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can check us out online at silveraeroservice.com. You can call us at 603-566-2075. If you like this video, please make sure you hit the likes button and also subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.